today, and uh, this song here we're going to do this morning is very special to me. We have some very special guests here on the front row. Their dad was Ralph Fox. How many people remember Foxy? Amen. And uh, when he told me that they was going to come today, and I said, well, we just got to do this song today. Amen. Like the woman brought to Jesus who was taken in her sin, I was so ashamed of what I'd done, where I had been. Well, justice called for payment that was more than I could give. When mercy called upon me, say, I forgive. What oh, the sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive. That sentence then was wiped away, and I could live. Well, I liked the part where he told about a mansion he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive. Now if you're tired of living with the wrong that you've done Come on home to Jesus, you know he's the cleansing one In his arms he'll hold you and you've just begun to live When you hear him gently whisper saying, I forgive Oh, the sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive just sentence then was wiped away and I could live Well, I liked the part where he told about a mansion he would give But the sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive Well, I liked the part where he told about a mansion he would give But the sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive Amen, amen. I am so glad I heard those words one night. Amen. I forgive. Yeah. Glory. E, everybody. When he returns a second time, he won't have Calvary's hill to climb. There'll be no crown of thorns upon his head. He won't be judged in Pilate's hall. He won't be mocked and scorned by all. But he'll be king when he returns the second time. As the crowds declared that day, they watched how Jesus goes away. Two men appeared to them in robes of white. They said, now friends, don't be dismayed, for he's coming back someday. So be ready. When Jesus comes again, when he returns a second time, he won't have Calvary's hill to climb. There'll be no crown of thorns upon his head. He won't be judged in Pilate's hall. He won't be mocked and scorned by all but he'll be king when he returns the second time yes, as john saw him on the aisle we'll behold him after a while when we move to that new city in the sky with his arms stretched open wide he'll say my children step inside if you're ready when jesus comes again when he returns a second time he won't have calvary's hill to climb there'll be no crown of thorns 
upon his head. He won't be judged in Pilate's hall. He won't be mocked and scorned by all. But he'll be king when he returns the second time. Yes, he'll be king when he returns the second time.
fellowship we've shared made joyful rivers flow and though i've been neglected lord you know where i've been so would you let me feel your spirit once again and lord i need to feel your power and the joy in my soul and the sweet peace that only comes when jesus has control i don't want to walk this road i know where it is so would you let me feel your spirit once again i remember victory in my soul and the close sweet fellowship we share made joyful rivers flow and though i've been neglectful lord you know where i've been and i need to feel your spirit once again and lord i need to feel your power and the joy in my soul and the sweet peace that only comes when jesus has control i don't want to walk this road i know where it ends would you let me feel your spirit once again and lord i need to feel that power and that joy in my soul and the sweet peace that only comes when jesus has control i don't want to walk this road i know where it is so would you let me feel your spirit once again no, I don't want to walk this road, for I know where it is. Would you let me feel your spirit once again? Amen. 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 I want you to sing with me. Page 260. 260. Saved by the blood. Page 260, singing. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved
Page 217, the windows of heaven are open. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. He gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. Let's sing it again. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. Now that's good practice. We're going to do it again. I'd like for you to smile if you can work one up some way. All right, some of you look like you're in misery. I'll tell you what. Let's stand up, brother. Let's stand up, and maybe the blood will rush to your head. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And on that very last end, I'm going to do that. And that's why I'm happy, and that's why I'm happy, and that's why I'm happy tonight. All right? Singing. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. Feasting from heaven and that's why I'm happy and that's why I'm happy and that's why I'm happy tonight Amen. you may be seated
Mark chapter number 7, I want to begin reading at verse number 31 today. Verse number 31. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and he had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude to put his finger into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto them, Epophatha, which is, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more they charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it, and were beyond, uh, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day, God, that you provided for us. You made it safe for us to drive on the highways, Lord. To enter into the house of God. You've given us all traveling mercies. You woke us up this morning, Father. And God, you provided all things. And Lord, you made a way that we could be here. And now, God, as we look into your word, I pray that you will bless me this morning. God, I pray, Holy Spirit, you'll put every word in my mouth today. Bring every thought to memory. And I pray, Father, that whoever's here today that might need to be saved, I pray that this would be the day and the hour they'd call upon the mighty name of Jesus Christ and be saved. I pray that Christians that might be going through situations and trials and, and uh, just going through battles, maybe discouragement today, I don't know. I pray, Father, that you'll meet that, that heart's need. Now, Lord, have your way today. I ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I like that, uh, that last verse there, number 37, and they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. I want to talk to you today about Jesus, how he has done all things well. Amen? He has done all things well. And I hope that by the time we get through this message today, I hope that you'll agree with me that Jesus has done all things well. I'd like to give you just a little bit of an overview about what's going on here in Mark chapter 7. Back in verse 1, it starts there, and, and the story is that all these Pharisees and scribes, they are again finding fault with Jesus and his disciples. That seems to be their history and their track record. Amen? They're always trying to find something wrong. And so uh, in this message today, uh, they found that they saw the disciples were eating with unwashed hands, and the scripture makes note that the Pharisees and the Jews are very particular about keeping their traditions. They, they would wash their hands, they would wash their cups and their pots and pans before they would eat. So they point out to Jesus that his disciples did not wash their hands and now they're complaining about it. You know what? Your disciples, they said, they don't walk by the traditions of the elders. And you know what Jesus' response here is? He said this, Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites. <laughs> he called them out exactly what they were right now. Amen. He didn't mess around. He knew what they were. And he said, it is written about you that you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You know what? There's going to be people at the, at the great white throne judgment of God that have been to church every Sunday. People's got stars on their Sunday school chart. People read their Bibles every day and, and could record how many chapters they read every week. But their heart was far from God. And they'll be standing there as goats. And, 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 and they'll be having they'll be the unbelievers that will be separated from God from ever, forever. And they'll hear those cursed words, uh, Depart from me. Uh, you curse it into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And Jesus said, these people, they worship him in vain and teach the doctrines of men. They lay aside the commandments of God and they prefer the commandments of men. You know, that's all over the place today, isn't it? People prefer the commandments of men more than they prefer the commandments of God. He said, you'd rather wash your pots and your pans and your cups rather than worship God from your heart. Yeah. Amen? Translation here is this. They counted their, their self-performance and their self-righteousness better than the commandments of God. If God could just see me tithe, if God could just see me do this, if God could just, I hope he's watching today because, man, I feel good and feel like I'm going to get a lot done. God, are you watching? Amen? Yeah. 
That seems to be the attitude with many, many folks. But Jesus informs them that their hypocrisy, their hypocrisy is so great They'd rather disregard the commandments of God. They would rather stick with their traditions to the point that they would make the word of God of none effect. And that's what Jesus said to them. When Jesus is finished rebuking the Pharisees, he calls the people aside and he begins to minister to them about the things that come out of a man or the things that defile him. And these are the things, some of the things that Jesus mentioned. He said the evil thoughts, the adulteries, fornications, and murders. And then there's a whole host of other defilements. You know, I thought that was interesting too, that uh, Jesus just got through talking to them about the, how they would rather stick with their traditions rather than the things of God. And then he gets into the things that defile a person that come out of him. And you know what? I, I, in my mind, I sort of correlated this. Self-performances and, uh, and, and my uh, man's ways better than God's are things that defile man. Amen? Yeah. The scene now shifts to Jesus leaving this area and he goes to Tyre and Sidon. And I like this because now we're talking about traditions. We've been talking about traditions. Jesus is going to break a tradition right now. And he's breaking a, the Jewish tradition now by going to see these people in these Gentile cities of Siron, uh, Siron, <laughs> Siron and Tyron. How about Tyre and Sidon? Let's do, put them there, okay? But the, now the Jews, they would have nothing to do with the Gentiles, but thank God Jesus would. Amen? You know, when he's there, there's a mother of a young girl that comes to him and says, my daughter has a devil in her. Would you please cast this devil out? And then Jesus gently reminds her, well, you know you're a Gentile. But you know, she speaks words of faith and Je that he would do this great miracle for her. And Jesus says, go back to your home because the devil has gone from her. Amen. When she got home, the daughter was delivered. And then lastly, we read here in the last part of this chapter that Jesus is approached, as he's approaching Galilee uh, uh, from Ty uh, Tyre and Sidon, there's a man who's deaf. He's got a speech impediment. His friends come up. I guess this fellow was so bad off he couldn't even speak for himself. Amen. But his friends said... Would you touch his ears and make it where he can hear? And would you touch his tongue so he can speak? And Jesus touched his ears and then took spit and put it on his tongue. It's just like my mom used to put her spit on my eyebrows. Amen? And fix my hair. But Jesus touched, touched this man's tongue and the, the Bible said the string was loosened from his tongue and he could speak. And then everybody got so excited about this, but Jesus said, tell no man. And then that, isn't that interesting that Jesus just healed a man who couldn't talk without a speech impediment and he, this guy now can tell everybody, but Jesus said, don't do that. Amen. I, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what? The Bible said straightway this man's ears were open and he could talk without stuttering. You know what? The people were so amazed at what they had seen that this is what they said about Jesus. He hath done all things well. He hath done all things well. You know, I'm amazed at Mother Nature. I really am. You've heard me talk about this before. Tuesday afternoon, I, uh, I started working early on, on this message this week, and I was taking a break, and I stepped outside in my driveway. Right up against the house, we had this beautiful purple clematis in our yard. And I walked over to just take a little closer look. You know, the days are getting shorter. We're not going to be able to enjoy these flowers much longer. Amen? And those men, they, they have just like, like got their second wind. And that the top of that clematis is just, it's just outdoing itself. These purple uh, blooms are out there. And I walked over to get a closer look. And man, I am just studying as deeply as I can into that purple. And I'm looking down inside there. And then all of a sudden I heard... <laughs> I looked over and this big old yellow jacket. Man, he's just a going from bloom to bloom to bloom. And you know what? I wasn't going to bother him. He wasn't interested in me. And, and the Holy Spirit said, just look at him. And I did. Man, you know what? God has colored that bumblebee with black and yellow. And then he has given to him this distinctive sound. Bzzz, and all those things, all those combinations together is his defense. That's his defense mechanism. Leave me alone or you're going to be hurting. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, how wonderful that is. And you know what? I looked at his wings, and if I would have just reached out and touched one wing, it would have just destroyed him. But you know what? Those wings are very delicate to the human touch. But you know those wings can make him fly up to 10 miles an hour in an instant? Amen. So if you can't run faster than 10 miles an hour, you could be in trouble. Amen. But I thought to myself, he hath done all things well. Amen. 
Have you ever studied a butterfly? I tell you what, butterflies are a magnificent creature in my, in my mind. I, I watch them, man, they, they fly like that. You ever seen a bird try to catch a butterfly? Now, birds, they can change their flight pattern in a minute, but it's more of a curve like this. But a butterfly can do like this. I thought to myself, boy, if the United States military could design an aircraft that could <laughs> fly like that, and, and a guy still keep his brains, amen, there would be no defense mechanism against any aircraft like that, amen? And I thought, how wonderful that that is, and that is that butterfly's defense mechanism, how it protects itself, being able to change course like that. And I thought to myself, Mother Nature is great, but Jesus has done all things well, how he has designed creation, amen? Twice in my lifetime, I've been privileged to visit the Hawaiian Islands. And in my thoughts, I can still hear the sound of those crushing waves hitting those beautiful beaches and climbing up Diamond Head. And then at the top, you can look out all over the main island there and see out into the Pacific Ocean. And I have to say to myself, boy, God has sure done things well. Amen? Some of you have taken vacations to the western part of the United States. This morning, my brother and his wife, they're continuing a four-month vacation out west touring. And, uh, you know, I have seen the many colors of the Grand Canyon. Perhaps you have too. I've seen the snow-capped Rocky Mountains. I've seen the giant redwood trees in Yosemite, or you might want to call it Yosemite. <laughs> but I have to say that God has done all things well in creation. Amen? You've often heard me say how I like to step outside early in the morning and look up at the sky, and boy, was it beautiful this morning. If you missed it, you missed the biggest full moon that you've ever seen. Amen? Amen? But uh, I'm still amazed that when I go to bed, the Big Dipper is in the southeastern sky. And then in the morning when I wake up, it's in the northwestern sky. I don't know how it does it when I'm asleep, but it sure does change places. Amen? <laughs> but you know what? God has set their timing to be where they are at a given point of time. Because God has done all things well in the universe. If you're a creationist, I know that you agree with what I've been saying. God has done all things well. And you know what? It reminds me how that God has done all things well for mankind as well. I love how that God has done all things well at Calvary. After reading Mark chapter 7, it seems that uh, it, when we come to see Jesus and his disciples, uh, that there's not much that's changed in our modern day society. Amen? They were criticized back then. Today, Jesus is mocked today in today's society. The followers of Christ are criticized over many things. It doesn't take long that if you get into a disagreement and an argument with somebody, somebody's going to criticize your faith just because you don't see eye to eye with them. Amen? Yeah. You've heard the old saying that Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. Well, I'd like to change that just a little bit. Christians have been made perfect because we are forgiven. Amen? Amen. But that doesn't mean we'll always see eye to eye on everything. And we do have the right to disagree if we want to. Amen? Do Christians sin? Well, yes, we do. Yes, we do. We're born-again believers who sometimes sin. But we're not sinners. Amen? Amen. I know some of you are like, how can you say that? Well, the, the good news is, is I didn't say it, but God did. Amen. God has said, uh, if you just go back and read what the Apostle Paul wrote, every time he writes to the believers in, in uh, Ephesus or Corinth or wherever, he addresses the believers as saints, not sinners. Yeah. You know, I'm born again, and I'm saved. However you want to say it, I'm a saint. Amen. If you're saved, if you're born again, the Bible declares, the Bible, I said the Bible declares that you're a saint of God. Amen. And yes, I still sin sometimes. <laughs> In fact, I thought this was good news and the Holy Spirit gave it to me this week. When I got born again, the word sinner was erased from the mind of God concerning me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the word sinner was erased from the mind of God concerning you that are saved today. Hebrews chapter 10 tells me that I am in the new covenant of grace with God and my sins and iniquities, iniquities will he remember no more. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just great news. Amen. I can, the Bible also says that now uh, since I'm born again that I can boldly enter into the holiest presence of God. Thank God. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing that prevents me from talking to my Heavenly Father. There's nothing that stops the ears from God from hearing my prayers because all, all those partitions have been removed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I can boldly enter into the presence of God. I can draw.
people near to God in full assurance of faith today because I belong to him. My heart is cleansed from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1 9 says. And you, you want to know why? It's because that he hath done all things well. It's nothing that I did. It's all what Jesus did. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart was rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done that he groaned upon the tree? Amazing pity and grace unknown and love beyond degree. Amen. What am I saying? Christ Jesus has purchased my salvation at the cross of Calvary. His shed blood was payment for every sin, for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. His sacrificial payment was the once for all payment for all sin. And he finished the work before him, and I have become the beneficiary of the new covenant. Amen. By the way, it's his new covenant, and I've been invited into it, and you're invited into it as well. You know, the unbelievers, they can mock him. The atheists, uh, they can say that they deny him. The agnostic, they can doubt him. The Romans, they, they can slay him. The Gnostic can worship their many gods. The fool can say there is no God. The high priest can lie on him. The unbelieving thief on the cross can deny him. But Jesus has done all things well in that he paid even for all their sins as well. He hath done all things well, ladies and gentlemen. Not only did he do all things well on the cross of Calvary, but he did all things well in the resurrection. Thank God today. The apostle Paul wrote these words. And if Christ be not risen, there, uh, then our preaching is vain, and your, vain, your, your faith is vain also. And verse 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus had not risen from the dead, there would be nothing for us to talk about today. There would be no use for us to be here. It would all be in vain, amen. You know, what a tragedy that it is that so many people have easily been led astray in the cult religions. Thousands were attracted to the cult leader, Jim Jones, and they died an awful death in the jungles of Guyana. Perhaps millions were followers of the South Korean religious leader, Sun Young Moon. David Koresh led hundreds of his false te uh, teachings, and then they died in a fiery death. You know, the list could go on and on and on with many cult leaders. But they all had the same lie, ladies and gentlemen. They all said that they were the Messiah. But you know what happened to them? They all died. And they were never resurrected from the dead. Today, they're all dead. Tomorrow, they'll be all dead. Yesterday, they were all dead. And they will be accounted among the dead when they stand as goats before the white throne judgment of God. There's only one Messiah. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And before his death on the cross, he spoke of himself saying this, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. That's what Jesus said about himself. Amen. After Jesus said to the Father, I commend my spirit into your hands, he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He was buried and then on the third day, glory to God, the Son of God was resurrected from the dead. Amen. Paul said, and as Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also vain. If Jesus had not been risen from the dead, there'd be no use of us being here today. There'd be no difference between him or the other cult leaders that I just mentioned a moment ago. There'd be no resurrection story. Men standing behind pulpits as I'm doing this morning, would be, their preaching would be meaningless. We would have no faith to secure our eternal life. But Jesus is risen from the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, it is true. It actually really did happen that the Son of God was resurrected from the dead. Amen. And today he's at the right hand of God. And thank God he lives forever. And because he lives forever, guess what? Everybody who is born again and counted as a sheep is going to live forever in paradise. Amen. Amen. It is repeated in the four gospels several times. Jesus said, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. He has done all things well. Amen. He's done all things well. God had no pleasure, the Bible said, in burnt offerings and sacrifices. And here's the reason why. It was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. But God prepared a body, and that body was the body of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of 
God. Jesus came and took away sin. He took away the first covenant and the Bible said that he established a new covenant of grace. Amen. The Son of God was crucified and when he was crucified he made full payment for the sin of the world. God the Father was satisfied with that once for all sacrifice for all sin and, G and, and the shed blood of Jesus and I like what Peter said. I like to mention this every time. It was innocent precious blood that Jesus shed. Amen. And because the Father was satisfied with that sacrifice the Bible said that he raised him up on the third day. Amen. And it's that blood ladies and gentlemen that redeems mankind from all their sin. And it is Jesus who has the power to forgive the sin of all mankind. He's done all things well. You know he's done all things well in the new covenant also. The Bible said the new covenant law has been set aside and the new covenant of grace is established. You know what? All that needs to be done to satisfy sin's demand has been done in the body of Jesus. That day on Calvary when Jesus was hanging between heaven and earth with three nails, in the, one in each hand and a nail in his feet and that spear in his side wearing that crown of thorns and the blood flowing from his body. The Bible said that the, the body of Jesus was even unrecognizable as being a man because he had been slaughtered so badly. He was a lamb led to the slaughter. That blood that day is the blood, the cleansing blood that God accepted for the sin of all mankind. Amen. And because of that shed blood, that is the only way that man can be saved. Amen. Amen. All that needs to be done to satisfy de uh, sin's demands has been done in the body of Jesus. You realize today that all that the Jew needs to do today to inherit eternal life is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you realize today that all the Gentile needs to do today is to, uh, to inherit eternal life? is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. When the poor lost sinner comes to Christ for salvation, it is only that he needs to believe in who Jesus is. Amen. Believing in that he is the son of the living God and calling upon him to save you. Believing that he died on the cross making full payment for your sin. Believing in your heart that he was raised from the dead. There's nothing else that'll do. Your promises do no good. Your attempt to confess every sin that you've ever committed has no power. There's only power, power, power cleansing power and the blood of Jesus. Amen? Anything dealing with human effort to be saved is useless. It's all about Jesus. It's only that you believe upon the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, that you can be saved. It is Jesus, all of Jesus or nothing. That's just as simple as it gets. Amen? When Jesus held up the cup at the Last Supper, He said, now get this, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Do you realize that it is Jesus that is the new covenant? Jesus is the new covenant of grace. Amen. He has done all things so well that there would not be enough room in this whole world if all the volumes that should have been written about Jesus would have been written, there would be no room to store them for all the great things He had done. <laughs> As I was preparing this message, I'll tell you what, this week I was having a lot of difficulty trying to gather my thoughts. I knew early in the week he had done all things well. Man, that thought was just sticking with me. I was a thinking about it and I was a putting the pen on the paper, typing away, just to work in, and man, and boom, roadblock. I couldn't get a thought, but he's done all things well. And I thought to myself, boy, I'm just going to, I'm going to get out of this office and I'm going to go take myself a walk. And uh, that's about the time that Ray sent me a text and he says, hey preacher, I'm praying for you. And brother, I'm glad you started praying for me right then. I started taking a walk around the neighborhood. And boy, all of a sudden, I'm going to tell you, I never had so many chill bumps hit me on my back from the shoulders down to my tailbone. I had goosebumps on goosebumps because the Holy Spirit started talking in my ear and telling me some things to talk about in this message today. And it all started coming together. And I got to thinking, man, oh man, oh man, suddenly the Holy Spirit, He was reminding me of those people in the Scriptures that Christ did all things well for. Amen? Think about this. When Jesus revealed himself to doubting Thomas, Thomas became a believer and he knew that Jesus was going to do all things well for him. Amen. Uh, Peter failed Jesus by denying him three times. But after the resurrection, Jesus restored Peter and Peter knew that Jesus did all things well. Amen. In Paul's former life, he was a persecutor of the church, killing Christians and attempting to destroy Christianity. But then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and he called him Lord and he knew right then that Jesus could do all things well 
himself for him. Amen. And at the river of Jordan, John the Baptist identified Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world and he knew that he was looking at the one that would do all things well for every man and woman and boy and girl. On that first Christmas night when the angels were singing about the glory of God, they were singing about that babe in a manger that they knew that would do all things well. On the night that I was in a tent revival meeting and I went down to my knees and I said, Jesus, would you please save me? And at that moment, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus did all things well for me. Amen. Glory to God as he'll do all things well for you too. Jesus rebuked those unbelieving, critical, hypocritical Pharisees and then he healed that deaf man. He rebuked that devil from that young girl because he did all things well. When Jesus, the friend of sinners, went home to eat with them, he did all things well. Aren't you glad, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus Christ is a friend of sinners, amen? For we all were lost at one time. We were all walking in darkness and we needed a friend and when everybody else ran out on you, Jesus ran in, amen? Glory to God. I'm glad I heard the gospel when I was a little boy and I received Jesus as my Lord that night. I'm, I got a friend for all eternity that night. Amen. Because of what Christ has done for the believer, because of what he's done, all things well, someday he's going to say to us when we stand before him, well done, you good and faithful servant. Isn't that something, how that correlates together? He's done all things well. I received him. When I get to heaven, he's going to look at me and say, you did all things well, son. You received me. You believed in me. Amen. That's what he's looking for today. I'm so thankful how else that Jesus does all things well. When I look back over my life and I see all the different people that he's brought into my life, man, I've had a, I've had a lot of people that's helped me along the way, amen? And I've, I've been a guy who's needed a lot of help at times, amen? But uh, uh, God has brought the right people in at the right time to help guide me and show me and be a mentor to me. And there's been some other people that come across the path that tried to hurt me, but then God brought other people in that... Help me out. Amen. And God's done that for you too. Isn't it amazing that, that God uh, allowed you to be born in the family that you're born into? Amen. Yeah. Some of us are saying, are you sure about that? Well, I'm sure about it. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. God had it all planned. We were born in the family that God wanted us to be born into. And we need to start learning and appreciating our family members. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. God's done all things well. He's brought you here today. Or if you're listening to me by video, there's a reason for it. He's done all things well. He's arranged this time together that we would all be together today. Amen. You that are born again, you know just how God is doing all things well for you. Amen. You can look back over your life and you can count the times that God met your need. He's answered prayer. He's brought healing. He's supplied a great need. He saved your soul from a burning hell. He's giving you eternal life. You can say with confidence, boy, God has done all things well. Amen. Let's, come on up. Let's have a song here this morning. If you're here this morning and you're listening and you're not saved, you need to know that, that you could be born again today. You can have eternal life. You can be saved right now and you can know that you're going to go to heaven when you die. That's because Jesus has done all things well. I talk to people. I talk to one man some years ago, and he thought back then, just because he was in his 40s, that he had already put God off too long to expect God to save him now. That's just not true. If you're listening today, if you're here today, you're breathing air, glory to God, God has given you the opportunity to hear the gospel one more time, and, and you still have a chance to be saved. Amen? Yes. But maybe you're a Christian, and you're going through some things, and, and the devil's trying to defeat you. You need to be reminded today, God has done all things well, and he's not forgot about you. He's not leaving anybody out. Amen? He's done all things well. <coughs> You've not gone too far. God came to save you, not that you would perish. Amen? Let me assure you today, he's done all things well for a reason, and that reason is you. Amen? Let's stand to our feet this morning, and let's bow our hearts. Maybe you're here and you'd like to pray this morning. Maybe you don't know how to pray to be saved. It's really easy to be saved. God made it easy. It's called the simple plan of salvation. <coughs> Do you believe that God sent Jesus to this world to die for you? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If you do, then just tell God, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is your Son. And I believe that when He went to that cross at Calvary, He paid all of my sin debt in full that day. 
And God, I believe that when he was buried in the grave, I believe that you raised him on that third day. And God, right now, I'm asking you to save me. If you ask God to save you right now, he will do that. Loved one, it's just that easy to be saved. Just mean it in your heart. Level with God. And God will save you today. Father, I pray that if there's one in our audience today, I pray, Father, if they need to be saved, that right now they'll just bow their heart and ask you, Lord, Jesus, I know that you are the Lord. Save me. Save me now. Save me now. I pray for our video audience today. God, if there's one listening that's unsaved, we pray that today would be the day they'll bow their heart and receive eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Brother Ray, come on up and lead us in a song. Let's sing this morning. Thank you. Just a moment.